The following program is classified C. Welcome to Wombat. Hi, Agro. Hi, Jilly. <laughs> hi, everyone. Hi, hi, cameraman. Yeah, hi, okay, all. okay. Hi. We've said hello. There's hi. No, there's no one else to say hello to. Okay. Whew. All right. Today on Wombat, there are some fantastic things that are going to happen, but wait till you see our first story. I won't tell you too much about it. I want to introduce someone to you first, okay? Yeah. This is Ryan Heslop. Yeah. And Ryan's a wombat watcher, even though he's so tiny, he still watches wombat. Hi there, Ryan. Welcome to this program. And Agro now has a joke for you. I Don't do. You? Um, what game do cannibals play at parties? Cannibals play at parties. Oh, you're going to think about this one, aren't okay, you? Okay, now I know the answer, but I won't ruin it. All right. Swallow the leader. No, that's not the answer. Oh, it is. No, it that's is. not the answer. All right, all right. What's um, the answer? Uh, how do you count a um, herd of cattle? <laughs> I don't know. How do you count? Do you know the answer to that one? Like, how do you count a herd of cattle? No. You don't know? No. With a cow killer. <laughs> <laughs> that's not too bad. Hey, thanks a lot for that. I'm sorry. Who does he giggle? Uh, it's, it, some... it's just someone. OK, we're going to start the show. Why do you see what Gillian's Who's doing? doing the giggling? I think she's looking at a <laughs> ball of wool. I'm not quite sure, though. You see this scarf? Well, it was actually made from this pile of fibre, which is actually <laughs> a living, breathing Angora bunny. His name's Puffball. <laughs> <laughs> Angora bunny rabbits are the most efficient fibre-producing animals in the world. Growing one millimetre per day, this fibre is very light and warm. Originating from Turkey, from a town called Angora, these cuddly animals also make adorable pets. Well, as you can see, these adorable-looking bunnies come in all shapes, sizes and colours. This is the gold variety, the smoke variety, obviously the white variety and the agouti variety. But they all eat the same. Pellets and, we nearly lost one here, pellets and hay. Today we're at an Angora bunny stud in Hamilton, New Zealand. These bunnies here are just four of the 60 stud animals owned by Dave and Terry Rees. So why a rabbit farm? because these guys are a business. That is, they often get shorn and their fibre is sold at the markets. After strapping the rabbit into place, Terry shears the fibre off in just a few minutes. No, 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 it doesn't hurt the rabbit and he doesn't get cold afterwards because Terry leaves enough fibre on his belly to keep him warm. As you can see, a lot of angora fibre comes off the animal. And you know what? It takes him only 86 days to grow his big, thick coat back. Benito. There you go. It wasn't too bad, was it, darling? <laughs> now, what do you do with all this fibre now? Well, I can spin it just as it is. It doesn't have to be washed, you see. There's no smell. Right. No it's smell. Very it's very clean. And I can just take it in, separate it a little with my fingers and spin away. Angora fibre can be made into all sorts of things. It's better to mix it with wool fibre from sheep to make wonderful jumpers, scars, shawls and lots more. Oh boy! My nose gets really cold in this weather. I'll just warm it up. Oh, I wish the leaves and things wouldn't cling to my lovely white fibre. Can you smell what I smell? Mm, carrots, yum! Well, I'm sure there's a few of you running around your lounge room saying, I want one as a pet, I want one as a pet. Well, Terry, do they make good pets? 
Well, if you're willing to put the work in, yes, they would make good pets, but it's like the difference between a long-haired and a short-haired dog. A lot of work. A lot of work in a long-haired dog, and there's a lot of work in a long-haired rabbit. But as long as you're willing to give them a brush once a week, cut their nails once every three months, and give them a dose of some proprietary medicine for mice, they'd be fine. Now, you can have them as pets here in New Zealand. In Australia, you have to first check in your home state because they're banned in some states. As for the story, we've come to the end, so I have to love you and leave you. Bye-bye, beautiful. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? I am. <laughs> I wonder if they like oh. baby talk. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Be baby. Be very quiet. It's wabbit season. <laughs> oh, Agro, hey, come on. Hey, they are nice, it's though, aren't they? It's wabbit season. <laughs> <laughs> All right, settle I'm now. I'm waving in my uh, Excuse car. Excuse me. It, can Diddy you just be quiet for one minute? Din, din, I just din. want to show you something really special. Turn on the radio. This will make Diddy you be quiet. Din. This is Nikki. Right, Nikki. Oh, she sent me in um, a tape. Well, that's right. She has, and I thought I'd play it for you. Okay, I'll just grab the tape. There with, you go, Nikki. With, with a with a song in it. There's a song on there. There's a song Waltzing on there. Matilda. Have this, a listen. This is oh, specially for you. In my okay, this is specially for you. Isn't that incredible? Rock and roll, it's not. <laughs> hey, thanks, Nikki. And there's another song in there too that I'll actually play and we'll go to a commercial break. Okay? okay? Blake? Break, you know what I mean. Yeah. I'm confused. I'm listening to Nikki. Today, Just about everyone in Australia, but these two are very special people that are watching Kelly Stein from oh, New South Wales. Kelly Stein, I wonder if she's got a friend named Brent. I don't think no, so. Big no, say no. Bradley Warren from Queensland. Hi, Bradley. Thanks for sending in terrific photographs. They're great, Kelly and Bradley. We're going to be sending you a wombat pack for the terrific photos. So there it is on your television screen right now. We'll be sending that out to you really Me, soon. Me, cake, burgerings, or I'll be exploring Australia. Wombat sticker and a whole stack of there, other stuff. There's heaps of things there. Now, don't forget, if you do have a photograph you'd like to send in to us, this is the address. Your turn, Agro. You read this. Wombat, <laughs> Post Office Box 877, Brisbane, Queensland, 4001. And remember, if you live in New Zealand, where do you send your photographs to? To the station you're now watching. OK, trends and things. Yeah, what do you want to know? Well, just I'll tell you, I'm trendy. This is normally with Nicole. She's the trendy one. I know, but I are trendy. I am. <laughs> Don't start. We're having a 50s night. Yeah, what you got on? Would you stop it? Actually, you know what I've noticed about you, and you're not wearing them today? You have all those badges. You know how you collect badges? Oh, yeah, I collect badges. And you've got them on your hat sometimes. And I also collect pin numbers, too. Agro, that's not really a hobby or a trendy thing to do, is it? Is it is a hobby. <laughs> it is? Yep. What sort of a hobby is that? Financially rewarding. Um, Agro, uh, come badges on. Badges is okay. Badges. Okay with badges. All right, are we about to check out some badges? Is this trendy? Yeah. Christine's trendy. Here she is. Hey, fashion freaks, I've got some news hot off the press about badges and buckles. Now, look, I don't want to badge you, but you've got to get a load of this. So, buckle up and come with me. Buckles like that do you have? Five. Five? And why do you wear them? Because they're different. At one stage they were, but not anymore. Everybody's got them. You still think they're groovy though? They are groovy, in a sense, depending on what you wear them with. Buckles are really good because um, you can get buckles to match your earrings as well. I like to show them off. So Kelly, why do you think this is happening? Well, Christine, firstly, badges. Badges have become cheap and, like, they're fun for kids to wear at all times. I mean, um, you can put them on anything you want. You don't have to wear as many as Christine, <laughs> or look like Christine even, but um, you can look quite good with just a few of them on. You can put them on hats, bags, badges, badges. <laughs> You can't put them on badges. <laughs> That'd be fun. And what about the buckles? Well, the buckles are great too, Christine, because they're cheap. They're cheap like the badges. 
and they're really easy to put on. You just need a strip of leather. You just swap them over like that. And um, you can change them as often as you like or have as many as you like. And everyone is wearing them. Yep. They look really smart. And as you wear them, they look like um, they jazz up things. And um, this really look really good. Uh, and they're, and they're cheap too. So fashion freaks, there you go. What's hot and what's not, now you know. If your clothes are looking daggy, don't feel down. Grab some badges and buckles and you'll look hot around town. Hey, don't throw those old threads in the bin, cause badges and buckles are definitely in. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo hoo. Boo hoo hoo. Boo hoo hoo hoo. Oh, Bob, pull yourself together. You're crying. <laughs> oh, wow. That was terrible. That's what I had to tell Jill. Beauty might be only skin deep, Jill, but ugly goes right to the bone. <laughs> Another lucky winner today in the Seawall competition. This is where some lucky person will be travelling to the Gold Coast, flown from anywhere around Australia to the Gold Coast, experiencing a weekend at SeaWorld and a job of their choice to get work experience with an adult. The winner, who wants to be a dolphin trainer, is Julia Beatty from Devon Hills in Tasmania. Julia, pack your summer clothes. It looks like you're off to SeaWorld to become a dolphin trainer. And if you'd like to enter this competition, this is the address that you send your entries to. Seawall Scholarship Competition, GPO Box 8777, Brisbane 4001. Put the job on the back of the envelope that you'd like to do at Seaworld, and it's very important that you put your age as well. So it's name, address and age, and the job that you'd like to experience at Seaworld. And who knows, on October 3, when we have our next draw, it could be you flying to Seaworld. Good luck. Well, last week, Michelle Bonnet promised to come back and come back with his crepes because we're going to put some fillings in it. This is what we made last week, the crepes. Now, Michelle, we're going to put yummy things in them today, right? You don't just eat them just plain. There's the ingredients we used, one cup of flour, three cups of milk, uh, 100 grams of butter, three eggs, and you can either um, put it in a bowl and mix it up or you can use a blender, Blender, correct? yes. Easy but, in the blender, Yeah, yes. the blender would be a good idea. Make it nice and smooth. Maybe easy, but as long as we put the melted butter inside, it's very important. Oh, okay. You can't put the butter cold inside the mixture. You've got to melt the butter. All right. That's important. Melt the butter separately and add it. And then once you've um, cooked your crepes, that's what they should end up like. But the trick is now, Michelle, it's very hard to get crepes this thin. I've just noticed yours. Mm -hmm. Now, that's <laughs> I one tried and it's really hard. That's the one you made before. Yeah. About half inch thick. It is not a half an inch <laughs> thick. Uh, it's a, a, yeah, not quite. a little <laughs> few millimetres thick, I think. But it's not that thick. Well, what can we put in them? Like you can eat these for no, all different reasons. That's can't a good you? thing about those crepes. You can really put anything you like inside, mm -hmm. uh, especially what's left over from the dinner before, for breakfast. Oh. As long as yeah, something you like, just put it in, fold it up, and in the oven again. That's okay. a good thing about. Okay. Well, I want something sweet first. What can we? All have? right. Okay. Well, we got strawberry, so we're going to use a strawberry. Yeah. Why not? A few strawberry. <laughs> strawberries. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, some nice sour cream. Sour oh. cream. Now, sour cream sounds terrible. Yes, but it's, it's not this sour cream. Actually, it's very similar to the French thickened cream. Oh, right. That's the way we buy cream in France. It's very thick like this. Okay. We, we can't buy cream like you have in Australia, very thin. That's a cream we, we've got in France. Right. It's so called sour cream, but it's not really it sour It doesn't cream. taste no, really no. sour. Give no. it a go. You'll be surprised. And actually, we should have a bit of sugar in there, but... We haven't got any it does, today. Doesn't matter. He couldn't you... fit it on his motorbike when he came up today, could you? You have to go without sugar for one day. All right. All right. And then you fold it up. We could put ice cream in it, couldn't we? Well, but on the side? Okay, all right. Okay. I'm just sort of Gee. suggesting. Gee, you're greedy. Well, no, that'd make it a bit sweeter, though, too. Yes, it? it would, too. There we go. Just put a little bit of ice cream on it. There you go. Now you can do it. <sighs> Looks great, doesn't it? Okay, and you mix it. There you go. Right. Fold it over. You fold it over like this. And you can spread a bit of icing sugar on the top. And that's it. You're ready for dessert. And you eat it with a knife and fork. Don't even yeah. think about picking it up with your fingers. <laughs> and for, for dad and mum, maybe a little bit of grand money on top. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> now, what else do we can we have? We've now, got the sweet one. All right. Now, here we have the leftover from yesterday, which are beans, a bit of beans, onions, tomato, a bit of everything. So 
Oh, yeah. It can be much more leftover than that. Okay. Uh, right. So, so like bubble and squeak, we sometimes You do the same thing. Sort of making bubble and squeaking, put them... Middle, middle of your mm -hmm. cream to change the taste a little bit from last night. Put a little bit of uh, sour cream, what have you got there? Cottage uh, no, cheese. Cottage cheese, yes. We're going to use cottage cheese with yes, this? Yes, a little bit of cottage cheese. Are you sure? Yes, yes, anything goes. Oh, Only okay. Trust me. Okay, <laughs> trust you. And uh, we have some cheese uh, we here? We put the cheese on top, right? Oh, so all right. We fold it up the same way. And then get the cheese on top. So. Mm -hmm. right. And then only thing you have to do, put in the oven and it's ready to eat. I was going to suggest that you have to heat oh, that yes. one up, wouldn't oh, that yes, be nice? Yes. Or a, a low oven or you can put it in your microwave, ask your mum to help you out. Yes, but it's better if you go in the oven because the, the cheese is going to be a bit gratiné. All you right, understand? back to the other yeah. um, <laughs> oven <laughs> and put it in there for a couple of minutes, around right. about what, how, what temperature? About uh, 150. 250, 250 yeah, that two, 250. Only for a little while. Yeah, then. not very long, probably five to ten minutes. Good, all right, one more, one more crate, let's do it. What have we got there? We've got some yogurt here, or do you say yogurt? Uh, yogurt. 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 Oh, yogurt. Yogurt. Okay, I'll get it. Okay, <laughs> très bien. That's very, very good in French, isn't it? Oui, oui. Oui, and that's yes too. Okay, now what are we going to use? No, with yogurt. Um, my children, I can't make them eat yogurt. The only way they can eat yogurt is by mixing it with something else. And I find with the crepe, the thing is uh, cream and ice cream inside. All right? Well, see, yogurt's so a bit sour. Not everyone likes it. Oh, I put some sugar. All right. You see what's, what's happened then? You put a bit of sugar on the bottom, put a mixture of your yogurt. Yeah, this is called camouflaging your food, oh, so you don't really know what you're eating. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is good. If you're cooking this for your mum and mum and dad or your brother and sister, don't tell them what they're eating straight away because they might be a little bit surprised on how right. some of these things taste. Yeah. Like the beans with um, a crepe and cottage cheese sounds funny, but I'm sure it tastes lovely. And uh, also for this one, you've got to lukewarm, not not hot, not cold. Cold so is not very good. So you put yogurt on the top as well? Yeah, just, oh, yes, to cover it up, so it looks a bit nicer, that's all. And you're going to put that in the oven and make it lukewarm? Yes, lukewarm, just for a few minutes, otherwise the yogurt will get sour. It's not, not good. Just oh, a nice. for a few minutes, so it's room temperature. Oh, great. That's it. And that's fantastic. We've mm. got it done really well. Michelle, thank you very much. Oh, Excellent. It's my pleasure. Oh, and we may be having you back on Wombat real soon? Yes, maybe. Would you come back? Yeah. On your motorbike? If you pay well enough. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> pay? <laughs> Just before we go, can you say goodbye in French? Yes. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, oh, oh. In, in French. French. Oh, oh. Gee, au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> à bientôt. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Wombat recipes. Uh, oh, oh, à bientôt. Au, au revoir. Excuse me. Oh, oh, look, I was supposed to not be here. See, you were supposed to come up first on agro. See, let's do go back. Look, like this, okay? Uh, you were supposed to go. Uh, au revoir, à bientôt. And I'm supposed to say hi. Uh, welcome back. No, you're not supposed to duck out. You haven't got the hang of it. One more oh, time, try one more okay, time. Okay, one more time. No, 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 what? no, no, you have to stay. On the count of three. One, one two, two, three. three. No! No, no, no. This is ridiculous, it. Oh, no, we are being too old. Look, you can't say it with a French accent. This is the recipe Chimpanzee that I was, Minky. <laughs> I was talking about and showing before. There's the crepe recipe and all the instructions, what you do. They're really easy to make, in fact. But if you'd like the recipe, you can Does write... Does your doggy bite? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> doggy bite. Okay. Do you have a room? No, I do not have a room. You have to send into this address if you would like a recipe. You can just write into us and make sure you put wombat recipes on the front of the envelope and then we'll send the recipe instructions out to you. And it's funny that we should be talking about recipes. Yes. I have here. You do you have a room? No, I do not have a room. That's your doggy bite. Look, no, my doggy That's your doggy bite? No, he does not. Look at this for a recipe. Excuse me. There we go. Agro's dynamite recipe. Look at that. Unbelievable. Thank you very much for sending that in. Now, I've got a letter here with this, and I'll just show you. In fact, it's really involved. Are you right there? Yeah. Um, I'll just reach down here. There's lots involved in this. This is comes from um, Hilka Cussicus. Oh, look what's on the front. Look what's on the front of that one. What? What's on Open the... it up. What's on the front? Do you have a room? <laughs> Does your doggy bat? <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much. Hey, Minky. For that. Look, would you cut it out? Or are you being silly? Okay. Uh, there's a chimpanzee monkey. Minky. Minky, Minky. We're going to take a short this commercial your break. Back? We're coming back. We've got lots of other things happening. <gasps> I don't Welcome back to Wombat. Now, we're being serious now, aren't we? 
Yes, we are. No, no French we accents. We are, baby. No, no French accents now. Back to the Australian accent, OK? Why, well, you got a phobia about French accents, have well, you? I haven't got a phobia. That's a big word, isn't it? It is a big word. That's a big word, isn't do you, it? Do you know what it means? Do you know what a phobia is? It's rude, isn't it? No, it isn't rude. Is that rude? Do you know what a phobia is? Um, like, um, do you think I have a phobia? Uh, what are you looking at? I'm looking for a phobia. No, no, Agro. A phobia is something that you see about. What, what, what? Phobia. What? No, that's not a phobia, Agro. You can't see a phobia. Like, it's just a description of something. Well, your shoes are off so I can smell a phobia, hey. I think we'll let Bob explain what a phobia is. It's like, for instance, if I said, oh, there's a spider just there. Good. No, 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 you're supposed yeah. to say, oh, no, not a spider. What do you want, a leg? <laughs> oh, there's five you're, left. You're terrible. Take it away, Bob. I give up. What you have just witnessed is a normal young, uh, young man's reaction to a confrontation with something which struck terror into his whole body. In this case, the object was a cuddly toy. Now, we all have a fear of one thing or another, such as... Drowning. Shark. Spiders. Snake. Sharks. Snakes. All these fears we have just heard about are quite normal and quite rational. However, in the case of this man, and his fear of this, this is a totally abnormal and irrational fear. And this type of fear is known as a phobia. Only a small percentage of our population suffer from phobias, which are not just everyday fears. They actually interfere with the person's life. The most common phobia is agrophobia. But do the people on the street know what it is? That's when you're scared of aggro. Isn't that when you're all closed up sort of stuff? Is that right? Would you get angry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Watching aggro all the time. Agrophobia. Hey, oh. <laughs> no. Television? Cameras? All wrong, I'm afraid. Agrophobia is a fear of going out or of wide open spaces. Other common phobias are social phobia, fear of public humiliation, public speaking, and even eating in public. Claustrophobia, fear of closed spaces, and acrophobia, fear of heights, xenophobia, fear of strangers. So, what exactly causes a phobia? Well, a phobia can be caused by any one of a number of problems, such as depression, underlying anxiety, or even an unpleasant experience. But another question you may well ask is, how do we treat the problem? How do we treat the problem? I thought you might ask that. Well, the best way is to expose the person to the thing or object that is causing them discomfort. And sooner or later, they will become totally at ease with the problem. There is no term for this person's phobia, so for the benefit of this story, we will call it cuddlophobia, a fear of cuddly toys. As you can see, this man is quite distraught, but after a short while, he realises there is nothing to worry about, and he is really quite calm and even happy. Well, I hope I've been of some help to you today. But that's all for now from Dr Bob's surgery. And just remember, never fear, because Dr Bob is always here. Bye for now. Uh. Yeah, that's different, isn't it? I got bobophobia. Bobophobia, have you? That's Dr. Bob, though, of course. Oh, well, then I got. Yeah, well, who was the patient? Uh, that was Bob. But Dr. Bob was telling you the story and about all, all about phobias. I've just gotten used to Gail and Gillian. Give me a break. <laughs> okay, I have some special things for you. Now, just look that Gifts? way. Gifts? Yes. Presents? Let's just okay. look that way. Uh, would you just look over there? Look, would you stop? Would you just... Stop that! OK, we'll just look out. No, look, hang on. OK. Hey, 
just over here. Ah, it's a gift! No, ah! All right, hang on a minute. I'm looking away. I'll just tell looking you back. who it's from oh, looking for a away. minute. Sure, you're looking, looking at my... Look, what'd you get out? This is from Stacey McClory from Yanko. On you, Stacey! Stacey's got a French fly dressing here for you. Oh, oh. French fly! <laughs> oh, yeah! Not French. Oh, please, not French fly dressing. Is that a chimpanzee? No, it is not. That's your doogie bath? very much, Stacey, and it sounds Do great. Do you have a, a room? And look what Stacey has made to keep your feet warm. Ah, cool. it is a blanket. Look at that. That. Isn't wrap that me up, wrap me up, wrap me up. Okay, I'll wrap you up because it's just about time for us to say goodbye. See you next time on yeah. Wombat. Is that Thanks, okay? Stacey. Yeah, <laughs> bye. Oh, this is trendy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Did your minky bag? No. Don't miss Jill and Agro on Saturday morning at 6.30 with the Super Saturday Show. Stay with us right now for Now You See It.